Good morning from Cornwall. I've been told now countless times by locals of Cornwall how lucky we've been with the weather. The two weeks building up to us coming here, it's been torrential rain. We get here and it's the most glorious sunshine. You can see right in the distance there, I mean, what a view this is, that's the sea over there. And today we're not packing up the bike, we're packing up the Land Rover and we're gonna go on a little road trip somewhere into the Cornish countryside. I'm kitted out today completely head to toe in Barber gear. One of my favorite brands, founded in 1894 by John Barber, specifically to protect people from the North Sea elements. It's now a fifth generation family run business still based up in South Shields. So what we've got, just for the essentials, I just beautiful quality waxed bag. That's the waxed essentials bag with the classic barber tartan inside. Beautiful. A beautiful thing. I love the brass accents as well everywhere. Brass buckles here and then the brass clips on the side. Boots. I'll, I'll include everything, a link of every individual item in the written description below so you can have a look. But lovely quality boots with proper stitching all the way round. Regular fit chinos, which just fit like a glove. Mm -hmm. So incredibly comfortable with a lovely green polo t-shirt or polo shirt. And this, possibly, possibly my favorite jacket, full stop. This is nice and easy to remember, the Barber Wax Mac. Mm -hmm. Size large, I'm 6'1", 80 kilos. I actually like getting a large in barber jackets just for that slightly oversized feel. But the, the quilted finish on the inside just with a bit of the classic tartan. Have a look at that logo there. It's all so beautifully old school. With the first time I've ever had this, and I can tell you it's useful for Cornwall because it is sunny but it's still cold. Hand warmers, it's so useful. Never had a jacket like that. Cord on the collar as well, and it's just, it's all day comfort. All of this gear over the moon with. So you can check all of the items in the written description below. Basil, are you coming with us? No. You're not, are you? We tried yesterday to manhandle him into the Land Rover and he wasn't having any of it. He put both of his feet on the seat <laughs> and pushed Monica back about a meter and a half. So there's no hope in that at all. So we'll leave you here, Basil. You know, it's amazing how quickly you get used to the old school charm of this Defender because I remember when I passed my test, driving test, that's completely normal, no cars, had central locking. And then you get used to all of the little luxuries. You know, going back to it, it's annoying at first, but after about half a day, just pushing that down, <laughs> it adds to the charm. I was warned by that, turning circles on defenders. Owners have said, get ready, Freddy, because turning circle on a defender, well, it's non-existent. And it's true, things that, like getting out of the gate, things that should be easy are monumentally difficult, stressful, and every time I do even the slightest maneuver, it looks like I'm in the Austin Powers movie, where you're desperately turning from left to right. Mission accomplished with that, though. Monica, let's go. First stop off, we're going to try and get a ferry to the other side of the cove from Falmouth. Never done it before, no idea what to expect. Will they say the defender's too big? And will I have the skill to actually maneuver the defender onto the ferry? Jury's out because Monica says my maneuvering ability <laughs> in the Defender is at best 
questionable. I was recommended to come here by my parents, St Just in Roseland Church. It's thought of by some to be the prettiest church in England, and it's stunning. I'd love to know more about it, but honestly, there isn't even one bar signal here, so <laughs> I'll have to go home and actually Google it, but you almost wouldn't believe it's England, surrounded by palm trees and then with the water here. Unfortunately, we've caught it on hugely low tide but right on the water's edge. It's, it's stunning. Beautiful. I'll take you on a little walk around the grounds because it just gets more and more spectacular the higher up you get. It really doesn't feel like any other church I've seen in, in England, in the UK. It's just so lush. You can see everything covered in a thick layer of moss. And then, of course, palm trees surrounding the whole of the church and everything's steeped up a slope so once you get past the church there are these moss covered little steps to get all the way to the top and I'm hoping there may be a view once we get all the way up. I've just walked past a, a load of bamboo as well. The, the foliage, the vegetation here is, is incredible, really incredible. And you can see just behind the palm trees, the tip of the church there with the water right behind it. Right, I'll go and find Monica. I think she's somewhere down at about water level. But coming back down the other way, just have a look at the path leading down to the church. And how unusual in the UK to see a church surrounded by palm trees in this way.
I've just found out some details about the church. This exact church built 750 years ago, although it's been a site of worship right here for 1,400 years old, or 1,400 years. In the book, In Search of England, published in 1927, an extract, an extract of that book, have a listen to this. There are few cottages lost in the trees, a vicarage with two old cannonballs propping up or propping open the garden gate and a church in a churchyard, which is one of the little known glories of Cornwall. I'd like to know if there is in the whole of England a churchyard more beautiful than this. Fantastic. What a place. Well, that was probably one of the prettiest churches I think I've seen in the UK. It was stunning. And if you come at this time of the year, in January, you can hear the, the rattling of the door smashing <laughs> tomorrow and closing. If you come in January, I think it's about seven degrees, lovely weather, and no crowds at all. You can see how empty everywhere is. Monica, you've told me you found a pub. Yes, I think I do. Yeah? We'll, we'll see if it's open. Okay, let's go and get some lunch. We were so lucky to get a space. That was nerve-wracking there, trying to get around <laughs> that sheer bend like that. Again, winter, free parking. Mm -hmm. And look at this. Little old, what would that be, Fiat X19 Bertone styling. Convertible. And you can see it's such lovely weather, the roof's off. Beautiful little thing. I have to say as well, this town that we've never heard of before, just the drive down here with a view of the turquoise water at the bottom. What a beautiful, pretty little village. <laughs> much as possible because it's so snug Monica almost kind of angle the the camera this just to give an update I've just speaking to the barman lovely stuff it's called the plume of feathers this pub built in mm, 1756 so that would make it over 250 years old it has an excellent reputation lovely menu and this just before I even start Looks absolutely delicious. They also do a selection of local beers as well, and it's got just a lovely feeling right in the heart of this little village. 30 seconds to the water.
What a way to end the video. We've just pulled over just through a little wooden fence here with that view of the cove and the sun just about to set in front of me. You can see I can barely look ahead because I'm right in the sun's line. Thank you to Barber for teaming up on this video. If you're interested in any of the bits, do you know, I have to angle myself here away from the sun. If you're interested in any of the bits, they'll all be in the written description. We've got a 10 minute drive to the little ferry port and then another 20 minutes home. So we're going to head off, but thank you all for coming along. Cornwall, it just feels fantastic to be back. It feels like it's almost another country compared to the UK. It's so different from so many different parts of the British Isles. It's a stunning, stunning, magical place. And I cannot wait to get back on the road tomorrow. So thanks so much all, and we'll see you all in the next one.